Fucking bag. Shana na na, shana na na na. Oh yep 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 yep. Boom 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 boom. Bargain bag. Shana na na, shana na na na. Greetings, one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. It's bargain bag time once again. Yes, we are coming down toward the end. Question mark of bargain bag. Uh, just a couple more months to go of opening bags anyway. But yes, Bargain Bag is my monthly hunt for buried audio treasures in the form of two mystery CD grab bags from the late Skips Records and CD World. Between opening the two bags, I will talk about a CD that I have found or that you might find in the bargain section of a music retailer near you. Uh, but before any of that, I break down the stuff that I found in last month's pair of Bargain Bags in rough order from castoffs to keepers. So let's get started. Uh, first off, I had a couple of uh, singles or EPs. This one was actually just a one track, I believe it was, uh, if I remember correctly, CD single by Sonic Joyride called You'll Never Know. And that's why there was no track listing on the back. It's because it's just that one track. I'm 90% I'm sure if memory serves, that was just that one track. It was okay. Uh, EDM popish kind of stuff. Yeah. And then we have a song by Georgie Porgy. It was called Sunshine. Uh, this is a, oh gosh, 11-track remix CD. So yes, 11 mixes of the same song. Yes, not boring at all. He is an okay vocalist and an okay musician and stuff. It's just the song was, yeah, kind of R&B-ish dance kind of stuff. Did not float my boat at all. And then we have this one here. This was a Christian CD, as you can tell. And my uh, suspicion was right. I talked about when I got pulled the CD out of the bargain bag last month. I suspected it was a mixture of songs and sermons, and that's pretty much what it is. You know, what can I say about... What can somebody who is not into Christian music say about Christian music? Basically why I'm moving on to the next one. Then we have... This one was kind of EDM type of stuff. This is a uh, an EP, like a remix EP. It's got like four tracks, and then the rest of them are remixes. Alias Tarsier, I think is how you pronounce the name, and the song is Plane That Draws a White Line. And something kind of interesting is uh, the front insert was is uh, split down the middle, so it's kind of a half gatefold. Would that be what you call that? I'm not sure, but clever design. The music is very meh, one of the most meh CDs in this entire uh, bag. I was kind of suspecting I was going to be less likely to find keepers in this bunch, and it turns out I was right, because I listened to these all these after I got back from vacation, which was where I bought a whole bunch of CDs anyway, so it's kind of like I've got so many CDs uh, on standby for listening to right now that you know, it's going to take something really, really, really good for me to want to keep it at all. So I think I think I have like two keepers in here, maybe three. Anyway, uh, a classical CD by Barber is the next one here. It's just yeah, just a pretty perfectly decent compositions uh, performed well by the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra. Just you know, nothing that grabbed my ear enough to want to keep it. Then we have a uh, an album called Hush, Los Angeles Acoustic, and is pretty much what it says on the tin. It is. Uh, groups located in Los Angeles uh, performing acoustic versions of their songs. Uh, not a lot of well-known groups for me anyway. Uh, the most well-known group in this track listing was uh, Edna Swap, which I had actually never listened to before. I had only heard of them. And okay stuff. That's all I gotta say about most of these CDs, unfortunately. So yeah, this this breakdown is gonna happen pretty quickly. And then Jimmy Cozier, this is a, an R&B, contemporary R&B artist. Uh, this one is not bad. I'm, I'm actually, this one is fairly down in the list. I was going to get rid of it, but I might listen to it once more. Um, yeah, nothing really jumped out at me about it, but uh, yeah. Exec executive producers Clive Davis, Wyclef Jean. So, you know, he's he's got big names behind him. Uh, decent stuff. Uh, as I said, I'm going to listen to it once more to see if it's uh, worthy of keeping. I'm not holding my breath. Then we have Rufio. This is a group that I had heard of before. And I was pretty sure I'd heard of Jimmy Cozier before, but I wasn't sure. But yes, Rufio, turns out these guys are emo, punk, pop, rock stuff. So, which is not my favorite genre of music. Uh, usually with that subgenre of popular and rock music, it has to do with the beats per minute. When the beats per minute are a little too fast, I'm less likely to be fond of the music. 
Then we have Paul Geng, G-E-N-G, -E that's how you spell his last name. Nemocene, I think is how you pronounce the name of this. Uh, singer, songwriter, pop stuff. His voice was rather unremarkable, and the, the compositions, frankly, were not all that amazing. I hate to say it, I, I don't like to put down any artist, but, you know, in the grand, grand scheme of things, uh, the stuff that I've listened to, that one ranks kind of low on the list, gotta say. And this one, I thought I was going to keep it, but I listened to it a second time, and it uh, really shrank on me. This is, I guess you pronounce it Dove, or Dove, or maybe it's Dove, I don't know. But this is mostly in instrumental stuff. There are a couple of uh, uh, songs with lyrics in here. But, uh, yeah, not bad stuff. Kind of new agey, not quite as upbeat as contemporary jazz. Maybe smooth jazz, but it's even a little bit snoozy for smooth jazz. Uh, they do do a cover, or, or he does a cover of the John Lennon song Imagine in here. That's one of this album's brighter moments. But, you know, in the end, not really enough to keep. And then uh, these guys, uh, Kiyoshi Graves with their album Chase. This was okay. It, uh, I don't know if I'm going to keep it or not. Uh, early 90s revival, if that is, if that's such a thing. If they're uh, old enough that it can be considered revival. Uh, indie, folkish rock. Uh, reminds me somewhat of the Gin Blossoms. So, yeah. That kind of stuff. That gives you an idea. If you've heard the Gin Blossoms, you've kind of heard these guys. And then, uh, this was going to be pretty much the, the most promising one, or the one I had the most hope for in a selection, uh, This Perfect Day. This is their self-titled album. Uh, it is kind of what it looks like on the cover, a um, jangle pop rock kind of stuff from the early 90s, mid-90s, 1995. And decent songs, you know, not really grabbing my ears. It didn't grab my ears necessarily any more than Kiyoshi Graves did, but I'll probably listen, re-listen to both of these once more. And then the two keepers in this list were probably two of the most unlikely ones. This is an organ album by uh, Carlo Curley, and he died back in the mid-2000s, I think. I, I looked him up on Wikipedia. I was curious about him. And uh, yes, a very good organist, and this is a variety of classical uh, pieces. You've got the Liberty Bell March by Sousa, the War March by Mendelssohn, uh, but also some stuff that's not marches, like Rondo by Purcell, and Londonderry Air. Solemn Melody by Davies, and yeah, a bunch of uh, stuff, you know, mostly in the classical repertoire. So, pretty good. And for some reason, I have a bit of a thing for organ music. I don't, I don't know why. And then we have, this one ends up being the, the, the most likely keeper, American Ambulance. And this is their album, All Over the Road. Oh, no, All Over the Map, excuse me. Glasses. And yes, it's only uh, six songs, but they have, uh, a couple of the songs were kind of... Uh, they sounded like the Rolling Stones, like uh, like middle era, you know, 70s or 80s Rolling Stones. So that kind of kind of got me interested in, in them, sort of. And uh, one of the interesting things was they do a rendition of the uh, Elvis Costello song, What's So Funny About Peace, Love, and Understanding, and they do it as a ballad rendition. So that makes it kind of, it gives it an interesting twist, a very, very catchy. They do a very good job with that. Track number six, the last track on the album, is called Hey John Ashcroft. It's a reference to the Attorney General under George W. Bush, I believe. And yes, it was a very a song that was very, very critical of John Ashcroft and his handling of the war and all that other stuff. And they, they also call out a couple of uh, other Bush administration people. This obviously belonged to a radio station because, yeah, you know, it says, uh, you know, warning, you better listen to the song before you want to play it. And I guess they really d decided not to play this because even on the CD itself, they wrote... Track number six, no, no, which I found very amusing. So <laughs> part of me wants to keep it just because of that, just because it got, just got such a vehement response from the uh, record, the, the, the radio station that owned the CD. So anyway, I thought that was very interesting. So there you have it for the breakdown of last month's Bargain Bags. And now let's go ahead and tear open the first of two mystery CD grab bags for the month of September 2021. Where has the year gone? Seriously, September already? Anyway, and no, I'm not going to tear it open. I'm going to cut it open. Very gently like. And not to forget giving you guys the customary peekaboo of what is inside here before I get to see it. The viewfinder on the camera is so small, I couldn't read this for the life of me. So that, that is not cheating because yeah, the viewfinder is like not much bigger than the size of a postage stamp. What do we have here? We have Weathervane and their album Roll Like Thunder. I have never heard of these guys. 
I'm kind of suspecting these guys are going to be country. And that's one thing if uh, you haven't watched enough of my bargain bag videos. I enjoy part of the fun with these is guessing what genre the music is if I've never heard of the artist. So we'll see if that prophecy holds true in the uh, next month's video. Skyline with their album Bark. I've never heard of these guys. I wish I could comment on that more than I could, but uh, when you've never heard of an album or an artist before, you can't do much. And we have Panda Select 10% by Volume. Oh, <laughs> uh, a music pun and an alcohol pun rolled in together. I kind of like that. I love puns, so that gets my vote. And uh, I, I guess this is an artist named Panda, and the album is, or the, the label is Coco Pop Music, so. Again, I have absolutely no idea what to say about these guys. And we have, well, I've only seen the back of this one, and I can tell you it's hip-hop already because that's what it looks like. We have Barsham. Ghettonometry is the name of the album. It took me it took me a second to read it because of that weird lettering. But uh, I'm not much of a, of a hip-hop fan, so I'm not holding out hope for that album. But you never know. There have been exceptions to almost every genre of you know stuff that I've actually liked, even though I don't care for the genre. We have, this is uh, the second one in this batch that is still sealed, at least somewhat in plastic. The plastic's coming off this one. But we have Doc Lawrence, apparently self-titled. I'm gonna suggest, I'm gonna guess this is country, but it was on the Electra label, so it was on the major label. So kind of surprised then that I have not heard of this guy. And uh, another CD that is still sealed, we have Insulated. Have I gotten this one before in a bargain bag? Maybe? No, maybe not. I think it's just the fact that the letters are in circles that uh, reminds me of another CD I got. Yeah, I think that's all it is. It's just uh, that visual reminder. And then we have Furniture. I think that's the name of the uh, artist here. And Self-Produced, Self-Released. Uh, Angle Iron is the name of the album. Yes, Furniture. Interesting name for a band. So. There you go. That's the first bag. We'll see what the second bag holds in just a few minutes. Now, as for the Spotlight album for this month's Bargain Bag video, uh, since I've been in somewhat of a semi-binge, I guess you'd say, of listening to Bon Jovi studio albums recently over the last month or so, I decided to just kind of follow through with that and show you a Bon Jovi album. This is probably the one that I have most often seen in uh, bargain sections and, uh, well, the, the few thrift stores that I've been in and stuff. And this is Crush. This is their seventh studio album from the year 2000. And this is actually the first Bon Jovi album that I ever bought and listened to. Uh, I was, of course, somewhat familiar with their hit singles from the 80s and stuff, but back in the 80s during their heyday, I was never into them. That, that music was a little bit hard for me at that time. Uh, but yes, this is a, a great album. And one interesting thing, it's kind of a funny thing. You guys will probably find this weird and funny and silly. But one thing that made me pick up this album was the song It's My Life, the big hit single off there. One of their biggest hit singles, I think. And it was actually on this album. This is the sixth volume in the Southeast Asian version of the Now That's What I Call Music series. I'm going to go into this album at some later time because this is a real sentimental favorite for me for a lot of reasons. But It's My Life was the first track on, on this album and but I didn't buy the CD for that for that Trump song I bought it for like four or five other songs but when it's my life came on for some reason I just fell in love with it it was you know the 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 electronic elements and the the loops and stuff that were you know unbeknownst to me atypical for Bon Jovi but that kind of got me into it it, it was a, it was a great hook you have to admit and so later on that made me pick up the album and it is a it's a very good album uh, one of their most successful, although it was uh, the second in a row that uh, just made the top ten. It was number nine along with their previous album these days. Uh, after, you know, three or their previous three or four albums before those were all like, I think, number one. All of them were number one. Like four in a row. Uh, but so, yeah, these they didn't do very well on the charts or, or not as well as their other albums on the charts. But still, it was fairly successful. And it was after a, what was it, a five-year gap, their longest gap between albums when they put this album out. so, But I think it brought them a lot of new fans, and, and I was certainly one of them. And it, it took me a while, though, to really jump on the Bon, jo bon Jovi bandwagon. I didn't do that until, like, earlier this year. Picked up a whole bunch of their albums. And, yeah, I've been enjoying every facet of their career. 
honestly. And uh, haven't haven't heard a bad Bon Jovi album yet. But yes, uh, going, going back, getting back to this album particularly, It's My Life is a fantastic hit single. And uh, Say It Isn't So, the second track on here, I really enjoyed that one. That's, that's a good one. And uh, one, of, one of my favorite songs on here, and I kind of liked it at the time, but I am really beginning to appreciate it now, is the song Just Older. Probably Bon Jovi's first uh, dressing in a song of the fact that they're getting on in years, or at least that John is, well, I guess all the band members are getting on in years, but that John in particularly is starting to age, and, uh, you know, his, his younger years are behind him. He's, try he's admitting that through this song. So, but it was a, it's a great song. I, it's one of my favorites on the album. I love it. And especially even now that I am about to uh, leave my first half century on this planet. I'm not going where, anywhere. It's just, you know, in terms of my age, I'm about to leave my first half century on this planet. Just, just to clarify. Some other good songs on here as well. Uh, Next Hundred Years, that was a good one. And some good ballads on here. Thank You for Loving Me. And what was the other one? She's a Mystery. That was pretty good. And uh, Mystery Train, another song with the word mystery in the title, that was a good one. As well as uh, One Wild Night, the closing track, probably the most anthemic, you know, arena rock kind of songs on this album. That was really good. I liked it. And uh, an unusually titled song, which was also a fairly good one, Captain Crash and the Beauty Queen from Mars. That kind of feeds back to a primal or maybe subconscious, I guess you'd say, thing of I was into sci-fi and... Uh, Star Trek and stuff back in my early years. So anything that has any kind of reference to other planets and stuff, the, the word Mars just kind of, you know, brought my attention to that song. And that's probably one minor reason why I like it so much. So, but anyway, a very good album. Those of you who are really, really into classic Bon Jovi might not like this, this type of stuff uh, very much. But uh, as I said, I am an equal fan of all eras of Bon Jovi, their classic hard rocking days, and their more modern contemporary uh, stuff that they do that has a little bit more electronic elements and, and samples and stuff in it. So yeah, I don't know what else I can say about it. I'm going to go on babbling like an idiot if I keep going on. But yeah, I got to say it, it's in my collection. It's going to stay in my collection. But uh, yeah, very, very good album. I got to say, and that's it. Yeah, that's all I got to say. And I was going to say, let's go ahead and get on to the next bargain bag before this segue gets any more awkward. And But I guess that ship has sailed. Anyway, Sometimes I wish I were more eloquent in why I like albums. It's one of my limitations, I guess. And Peekaboo UCCDs, but I don't yet. And, uh, let's see here. What do we got? We've got Mortonette with her album The Light. Oh, it's got a couple of um, religious songs on here. But you've also got I Believe I Can Fly. And because you because you loved me, the Diane Warren written song, and everything I do, I do it for you. So, a mix of religious stuff and just covers of pop songs. So I will be interested to hear that. Then we have Denny Zeitlin in the moment. I have absolutely no idea what this is. Oh, Wyndham Hill Jazz. So it's going to be a jazz or new age album. So. I've never heard of him before, but I'm not afraid of New Age or jazz music, so it could be interesting. Then we have Robin Mead with Brand New Day. Special guests Jim Brickman, American Idol's Bo Bice, uh, country music superstar John Rich, and singer-songwriter Billy o oh Billy Dean. I thought it said Billy Ocean. I had my hopes up. Okay. So obviously this is going to be a country-ish. I look forward to listening to that. Yet another artist that I have never heard of. And then what do we have here? Golden Slumbers, A Father's Lullaby. This is jazz covers of all sorts of songs. Yeah, A Lulling Your Children to Sleep CD is basically what this is. Uh, Blackbird, Isn't She Lovely, Brahms Lullaby, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. So good artists on here. Dave Cause, Peter White, Brian Culbertson, David Benoit, Rick Braun, I was going to just put this in the cast-offs, but I may listen to it, because I, I like several of those artists. So. And then we have something in vaguely the same vein here. Relaxation. A relaxation CD, most likely. Yes, it's a classical compilation, so this one probably will go in the uh, straight into the cast-offs, because it's, it's not any particularly well-known or well-appreciated artists by me. 
and I have classical compilations, enough of those. And hey, look, another classical compilation. Uh, Vienna Master Series. Actually, I guess it's not a compilation. It's a Brahms CD, a bunch of Brahms works on here. So I guess I'll listen to that one. What the heck? And then, oh, a John Bon Jovi CD single. How about that? This is his song Miracle. Uh, oh, this is off the Young Guns 2 soundtrack. So I, I had no idea, honestly, that a, a Bon Jovi related CD was going to be in any of the bargain bags. So quite an interesting uh, co coincidence. Winky dink. That was a lame attempt at uh, blowing the bag. Oh, and uh, by the way, my shirt, in case you were wondering, Guest Room Records from the uh, store in Oklahoma City that I went to a few weeks ago. So, hi, Guest Room Records. Anyway, yes, as quickly as it started, Bargain Bag for the month of September 2021 is over. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.